Hello friends, Osiris here and the next 7 star terror raid event for Sceptile has been announced for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to go through all of the details in today's video as well as some of the best builds you can put together in your game so you can beat this when it goes live later this week. <laughs> Kicking off on the 28th of June, running through that weekend until the 30th, we're going to see the first phase of Seven Star Sceptile come to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It will return the following weekend from the 5th and run over that weekend to the 7th of July for its second phase out. And it will return like previous Seven Star Terror Raid events with those blissy spotlight Terror Raid events, the ease of getting level up candies and additional Terror Shards. Now let's start off with a quick overview of what we expect to see from the Sceptile. Uh, we know from the information that we have already that it will have that dragon terror typing so it's going to have weaknesses to dragon ice and fairy predominantly dragon types only really hit dragon for super effective damage they can't hit fairy types so fairy type going to be one of the probably the best options to go into this raid the other thing about septile that we have to keep in mind is at its base typing it is a grass type so we'll have some powerful grass type attacks as well as other coverage that it has access to. We'll be level 100. It probably will have between 30 and 40 times multiplier to its HP. More likely to be 40 going into this one just because of the low base stat HP that Sceptile does have access to. Likely going to have its hidden ability as well, which is Unburden. Uh, I don't know if this is going to play any effect in the raid because Unburden, when you lose an item, it will double the speed of that Pokemon. But unlikely that Sceptile has an item. None of the other previous 7 Star Terror Raid Pokemon have had items. I think we've had one occasion where an item has been present. Might be a case in this one. If it is, it's something just to consider going forward in the raid. Sceptile, quite a speedy Pokemon as well, so something to bear in mind, but its coverage isn't that great. If we look at the coverage options that it probably is going to have access to, things like Solar Blade, which is a physical type attack. It has Leaf Storm as well, a big, powerful, special attacking grass move. Dragon Claw, Outrage, or the big physical type attacking dragon type attacks that it probably will have access to to take advantage of that dragon terror typing does have other coverage in things like rock slide so you'll have to keep that in mind breaking swipe is another dragon type physical attack that it has and it can lower your attack by one stage every time that attack does hit into you acrobatics is a move that it will take advantage of especially if it does have an item loses it early on in the raid and then has double damage with that acrobatics for nice flying type coverage and it also gets access to drain punch along with some dark type attacks like crunch and throat chop as well that you might want to just keep in the back of your mind haven't listed it here because i don't think it's likely to have throat chop or crunch but they're things to just bear in mind as we go forward it's setup options few and far between to be honest and i think it dictates what we'll probably see the septile do in this raid it does have grassy terrain to boost those grass type attacks giving a 50 percent boost to any grass type attacks as long as the grassy terrain is present on the field as well as the residual healing effect it does have every turn on everything on the field that is touching the grassy terrain has sunny day as well that plays in nicely with the solar blade in particular solar blade normally a two turn attack but with the sun up it becomes a one turn attack and a very powerful physical grass type attack so we could see that sword stance this is mainly why we've got a list of physical type attacks over special i do think there might be a chance that it is a mixed attacker where it has physical and special type attacks that's why i've listed leaf storm and the solar blade there as two potential options but sword stance being its only way to boost its own attacks feel like that's probably the line of attack it's going to go down on that physical side of the spectrum so bear that in mind when you are ev in your pokemon sword stance is going to boost the attack on the septile if it does have access to it by two stages every time it uses it screech is something else that it has access to that can be real detriment to our side of the field where if it does use it and land then it will lower our defense by two stages increasing that attack power and the power that it's able to throw out with these big physical type attacks especially when you expedite that on top of the sword stance and then just to kind of play in with the dragon typing that it's got through that terrestrialization we're throwing in dragon dance as well that it does have access to not as potent as something like sword stance but will boost its attack and its speed by one stage every time we see it use it if it's there so the big takeaways from the Sceptile, I think, from an overview of its moveset, what it's got access to, I think it will be a physical type attacker. So EVing on the defensive side is going to be probably the most beneficial for you. I think as well, it hasn't got great coverage. I mean, you're looking at things like grass, dragon, rock, 
flying, fighting, ground and dark. Really, outside of that, we're probably not going to see anything else. So you can really cater the specific Pokemon that you want to bring to this raid to have the best opportunity possible against those attacking options. And on the back of all of that information, I've put together a few builds in game. As always, they will be featured down in the description below if you want to take a look at them in closer detail after the video, be my guest. We'll start off with one that I do think could be quite good going in this weekend, and it is going to be a zoom roll. It might seem a bit strange to start with, but it will make sense in a moment. We've got that fairy terror typing on there. The shell bell is going to be the held item, as usual, a good line of recovery throughout the raid, so we're not using heal cheers things like that level 100 and make sure you're putting a build together for these raids that you do hyper train everything so those ivs are all set to 31 maximizing defensive capabilities and offensive capabilities the move set that we've got on this azumarill is going to be charm belly drum mud slap and then play rough the ev spread is going to be 252 evs in attack and 252 evs in defense with the remaining evs put into hp has got an adamant nature as well and then comes the most important thing from this specific build is going to be the ability which is sap sipper so sap sipper going to give you complete immunity to any grass type attacks that come out from the septile every time you do get hit with a grass type attack it will boost your attack by one stage so helping Keep that attack stat as big as possible throughout the raid. I think the big premise about this Azumarill is turn one, you're probably going to want to go for a charm. Turn two to five, you're probably going to want to go for three mud slaps, get that trastalization counted down. I think the belly drum is going to be the key in this. If it nullifies your stats early on in the battle and it doesn't do it again for the rest of that battle, like the Embo did, I think you can get a belly drum off quite early on, pretty safely, and then trastalize, use your player roughs to do as much damage as possible to kind of run through it. The thing is with the Sap Zipper and that Fairy type and as well, the big attacking threats that are gonna come out from the Sceptile, namely those Grass type attacks and the Dragon type attacks, aren't gonna affect you at all. You're gonna have complete immunity. So I do think, although you lose that huge power ability, so your power output isn't gonna be as much even after the Belly Drum, still feel like Azumarill could be a very good pick going in this weekend. And with the immunities to the Grass and the Dragon, I think something that a lot of us should look at and potentially will be one of the better options consistent options going in it might be a bit slow but we'll not know until the raid comes around and we can test this next up is pheasantipity now i know a lot of you probably won't have access to pheasantipity unless you've got access to the dlcs the teal mask is where you will be able to pick up pheasantipity then you might want to look at some of the other options we have but if you've got pheasantipity i do think a very good option going into this raid very terror typing again level 100 hyper trained and the held item here is going to be the clear amulet because if we do see the septile using moves like that screech then i feel like the clear amulet best option choice going forward in this raid it's going to prevent any sort of stat drops on our side of the field which is going to be so useful in preventing the kind of expedited damage from the septile if we don't see anything like screech then i think you could probably change the moveset slightly and put on a shell bell here so you've got that at our line of recovery throughout the raid. The moveset that we've went for is Roost, Acid Spray, Nasty Plot, and Moonblast. Toxic Chain is the ability here. The EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack and 252 EVs in Special Defense with the remaining EVs put into HP and a modest nature just to make sure that you are hitting as hard as possible once you've got that combination of Acid Spray and Nasty Plot set up. The only worry here is I think if the Sceptile does have something like Sword Stance, probably want a go for maybe charm over roost so you've got a way to kind of lower that attacking stat throughout the raid and then maybe change like we've already mentioned the clear amulet to the shell bell so you've got a line of recovery through the raid but that's something that we'll have to cross a bridge when the raid goes live later this week otherwise i think pheasantipity gonna resist those grass type attacks until you terrestrialize gonna have an immunity to dragon type attacks and the only thing that would really threaten us that it does have as a coverage move would be something like Earthquake. So I think otherwise, Pheasantipity going to be a very solid option going into this raid this weekend. One I'm looking forward to testing as soon as the raid goes live. Next up is Fluttermane, a very good option against the seven star terror raid event for Charizard that we saw happen earlier this year. And one of the first seven star terror raid events that we had in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We've got the return of a dragon terror type Pokemon. So it, it's naturally going to be one of those Pokemon that we look at. We have to change the set slightly because I think the threats are slightly different between the Charizard and the Sceptile. But we've went for a Fairy Terror typing here. Clear Amulet is the held item again. 
might not be useful if we don't see something like Screech, but otherwise I think it will be a very useful tool going into this raid. The nice thing about the Fluttermane is as well, it has a way to recover health throughout the raid as well. So level 100, Hyper Trained of course, moveset going to be Charm, Fake Tears, Calm Mind and Draining Kiss. Product Synthesis is the ability, so if we do see Sunny Day, you can kind of take advantage of that through that ability as well. Uh, the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in Special Attack, 252 EVs in Defense, the remaining EVs put into HP with a modest nature. Now, if you go into the raid with the Flutterman in this particular build and it looks like you're taking too much damage, I would take all of these EVs out of Special Attack and then just put them into the HP stat so you've got a bit more bolster to those defenses. Charm's going to be there to lower the attack stat on the Sceptile. Fake Tear is going to lower the special defense on the Sceptile by two stages. Um, those two moves though will not work through the shield. So if the shield goes up early on in this raid, you're going to have to break the shield before you are able to utilize those. Combine going to be a really nice way to boost your special attack and special defense. That might not be the special defense side might not be that useful in the raid, but the special attack boost definitely will be. Draining Kiss is going to be your main damage output because it will be able to recover health while doing decent damage to the Sceptile throughout the raid. So a decent choice, I think. The Fluttermane is going to be a good option going in against this one. Again, it just comes down to how the Sceptile interacts with us when it resets its stat drops, when it resets our stat drops, and especially when that shield goes up with how quick we'll be able to run through the Sceptile this weekend. Another favorite fairy type that we've got featured today is going to be Sylveon, kind of similar to the Fluttermane and the Pheasant Dipping in a lot of ways, but does offer some different angle in some ways. Level 100, Hyper Trained, of course, Fairy Terror Typing, Clear Amulet, again, that can be changed to the Shell Bell if you would prefer, if we don't see Screech, but I am really conscious that I think Screech will be an option. So why I've went quite heavy on the Clear Amulet item this week in preparation. Again, we've got a very similar moveset to the Fluttermane, uh, Charm, Calm Mind, Fake Tears, and Draining Kiss. It just has a bit more bulk than the Fluttermane in its HP and its defense stats. So we'll be able to take hits a little bit better than that Fluttermane. Uh, it is going to be a little bit slow though that's the only caveat modest nature though with an ev spread of 252 evs in special attack and in defense with the remaining evs put into hp there but the same premise charm when you can fake tears when you can calm mind up and then use draining kiss to damage recover health as you go through the raid and the clear amulet going to give you any sort of immunity to any stat drops you're going to have as well the immunity to any dragon type attacks coming out you will have to worry about those grass type attacks though as well and finally one i will throw in here because it's likely when we get to the raid at the weekend Annihilate is probably going to be one of those Pokemon, although not going to be hitting it for super effective damage. It's probably still going to be quite a good option and especially a good option if we do see something like that Screech coming out from the Sceptile. Because every time it uses it to lower our defense, it will boost our attack stat at the same time. We've got the Shell Bell held item. The other thing is as well with Annihilate is you've probably already got a bunch of them built in your game. So it's going to be an easy one to transition to change things up for this Sceptile. Terra typing is going to be Ghost, level 100, hyper trained, of course. Moveset is going to be Rain Dance, Screech, Bulk Up, and Rage Fist. The ability here is the most important one, going to be Defiant, uh, like we've already outlined. If it does go for any stat lowering moves onto us, it will activate that Defiant and give us an attack boost. 252 EVs in HP and 252 EVs in defense with an adamant nature, and the remaining EVs after that investment into attack. And the basic premise is if we do see Sunny Day, you overwrite that with the Rain Dance. You go for the bulk ups because it's going to give you a defense boost, the attack boost every time you use it. It's going to power up Rage Fist as well because you're going to be taking an onslaught from the Sceptile. And then Screech, you can utilize to good effect as long as the shield isn't up to lower the defense on the Sceptile by two stages every time you use it. So uh, I, I feel like the Annihilate probably going to be something that we can use this weekend to pretty good effect. It's good enough defensively to take a, a huge amount of attacks coming out from the Sceptile and with a way to boost our own defense as well through the bulk up and our attack. Just feels like something that's probably going to be pretty consistent throughout the weekend. But we'll have to wait and see. One of these other three, depending on how the raid functions, could be a faster option. I really do like the Azumarill though, just for the fact of having the immunity to the grass type attacks and the dragon. I think that makes it a very easy option to take into this raid and it's probably going to be able to run through it. Just depends how fast it can run through it. Pheasant Dippity as well, probably the other really good option. The ones that have a little bit of a question mark above their heads is just the Fluttermane and the Sylveon and that's more down to 
when the shield goes up I expect it to go up early just because this Sceptile is a very, very kind of frail Pokemon compared to some of the other ones that we've had recently. So that does happen. It's going to make it harder, but maybe if you can break through the shield pretty early on, if it is a, a smaller shield, then it means these Pokemon can have an easier time throughout the rest of the raid once that shield has been broken. But we'll have to wait and see as always. Probably best not to put anything together in game before the raid goes live. We normally do. Uh, testing phase and then put out the best solo build very shortly after the raid goes live so on the 28th when it does go up just wait an hour or two at the most and then we'll have the best solo build for you to be able to go in and beat this with and farm for herba mystica like we'll see when it goes live later this week but that's everything i hope you found today's video useful if you've got your own ideas about what solo builds will be most effective against this dragon terror type septile when it goes live later this week i'd love you to drop them down in the comment section below and we'll see who can get it right when it goes live but thank you so much for tuning in friends if you have enjoyed it please drop a like do subscribe to the channel all that good stuff and uh, we'll be back with another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye